Welcome back, and today we are going to be playing out the Mirage 2000 5F. And this thing got changed quite drastically from the flight model, which got completely revamped essentially. It is of course still a Delta Wing with a mediocre engine, and it got a bit of a new loadout. It actually managed to get six times Michael backed up by the. And if you're not queued into that meme, I'm terribly sorry. It's uh, it's a little bit convoluted, but trust me, it is actually hilarious. The Mirage 2000 has given me probably the worst games at the new top tier with the Fox 3 meta. But it also gave me some of the more enjoyable ones. It's been very hit or miss. And that's really how the meta has been. But I'm not gonna harp on about that. I've made my stance pretty clear. Let's just take a look at the plane. The Mirage 2000 changed quite drastically. Especially with the flight model. It feels... Worse and better at the same time. It's noticeably worse at low speed. It is better at high speed. But it's still not great at staying fast. Especially at these high altitudes. It doesn't compress as much anymore. And you need to be careful that you don't just piss away all your energy. Because if you end up going like sub Mac And you are cranking, notching, going cold and all that stuff. It's very hard to break over Mac again. And once you are stuck in that zone. You are very susceptible to being shot down by AIM-120s. They already outrange your Mikas. Quite vastly, or your Michaels as we call them over here. But when you are going slow, it's going to be even worse. Your missiles have less range now. And you might just end up kind of gliding into a missile that's being shot your way. When you're going very fast, it is very hard for the missile without any fuel to keep up with your plane. Even when it's flying towards you, it can't really pull that hard because it's going slow. If you are going slow also... It doesn't have to lead nearly as much and very often will just kind of glide into your plane. High speed performance is still pretty good but you need to be careful when you are merging with someone when you do. Uh, because going very fast into a merge is actually not beneficial to your, well, merge. Because they are just going to end up gaining a lot of position in the first turn. And then you reach the second stage of this plane which is a low speed where you kind of got hit on the head with a hammer. This plane is not him anymore. Right now it's, well it's still good. You are still going to beat an F-16 like 60% of the time. F-16C for that matter, which is worse than it was. It's not terrible, but you need to be careful that you play it right. Because this thing right now feels pretty punishable. Because you shit away all your energy, you're going to get clapped. F-16 comes up, we go cold, we chaff. We don't have much chaff because I still have the bug going on here. We start pitching in and we go for the actual notch here. In case he switches on over to the AIM-9M and we're able to reverse him because we set up for the second turn here. We're going 0.8 Mac roughly, pretty solid. Now we just get the HMD, we lock him up and make sure that the Michaels are also unfortunately not as stupid as I thought they would be. Yes, they are pretty maneuverable. They have thrust vectoring and at like medium speed they pull off the rail quite hard. The issue is if you go too slow, guess what? The missile spins out because it is a thrust vectoring missile. It can kind of restabilize itself. It's not like an, a SRAM or an R73 where it spins indefinitely. It can recover, but this is going to take quite a bit of time as well as quite a bit of room. Secondly, the range is kind of hampered. And unfortunately, in terms of effectiveness in the average game, I'm going to rate these things approximately R77 tier. And that's just because of the drag and just the overall range that these things have. Now if they get in your MAR, you like your maximum abort range. These missiles are pretty solid. The thing is all these Fox 3's are. The issue is getting close. Now in the smaller lobbies like you're seeing right here. And in a little bit of the later stages of the game. This is pretty solid. And you'll see that I am just simply holding like maximal gimbal. I'm holding them on the left side of my nose. So that I'm already notching them. I can shoot it at them. It's close enough, you don't need to lead the missile at these ranges and the missile will do its thing and shit right in these guys' mouth. Which is basically ideal. So I'm just trying to keep this notch up, I'm trying to get them somewhat closer and once these people step into your web so to speak, the missiles are pretty solid. It is pretty fun to just watch them go in but it's not really different to the older Fox 3 missiles. I feel like these don't have real benefits. Over something like an MRAM. Maybe it pulls a little bit better in like certain scenarios. But overall the MRAM at close range and lower speed is more than sufficient. So I don't think it's worth the trade off. Now they do feel better at medium to close range than the R77. The R77 is I think the worst Fox 3 that we have right now. Maybe the Derby. I haven't tested them yet again. So I'm not really sure 
where to tier them, so to speak. I'm not saying that these missiles are unusable or that they're terrible. I'm just saying that among them, there are better options. There is a plane coming in. I'm trying to notch here, but it's actually a MiG-29 that's a bit further to the left than anticipated. And I should have locked him up right there and shot back. Instead, I kind of go panic mode and I go cold. I think it's a MiG-29. I'll just dogfight him. So I break out. I'm going to try to get a lock here. Michael takes a little bit too long to get in the gimbal limit. So this isn't going to curve in. We notch his missile. Now he's on a 6 though. Luckily, it's only an SMT. So he's never going to hit this shot right here. The SU-27 has a pretty similar playstyle where I just recommend you to lure people close to you. Where you get them into your, your territory basically. And then you just kind of offboard them with your HMD. You shoot at them and you just go cold. Secondly, you need maps like this. Maps like Golan Heights, maps like El Alamein and Sinai. They're absolutely terrible for top tier because there's zero cover. And of course you can't multipath and you can't BVR lob. But that is not dynamic. That is just... Playing tennis at max range. And if both parties play it right. No one will ever kill each other. Here I just kind of lob to Mikas over the mountain. I dodge them by simply using hard terrain cover. And he dies. Second MiG-29 pops up. 5 kilometers. It's a little bit close. But with a fry model like this. We have plenty of time to turn out. And because he doesn't have active radar homing. The second I hit him. The missile should go dead. Unfortunately we only set him on fire. Now we dodged it properly so it doesn't matter in the end. The second one does go dead because he actually ends up dying. But don't rely on your semi-active radar homing carrier to actually die from the impact. Because if you rely on it, you might just end up eating shit. Now this is a little bit later. I fly towards the middle of the map and the last guy is a MiG-29 SMT. And as we know, dying to a MiG-29 SMT just never happens. It really doesn't. Especially not like two minutes ago. We merge with this guy and I want you to bear with me. This is not a representation of how you fly this against an SMT. And this is the first time I flew this or second game after the flight model change. So I wasn't aware how it handled. I come in way too hot. I thought cutting throttle and just kind of coasting in would be enough. But this is at two kilometers which also changes the dynamic a little bit. And I end up going way too fast so i'm just gonna disengage i'm not gonna let this guy ride my ass because as you can see i only have 22 flares since well the countermeasures are still bugged at this point so what i'm gonna do instead i'm gonna fly away for a little bit i'm gonna use the terrain and i'm gonna slow down to about 0.95 so i can merge properly and i'm gonna try to get behind the mig 29 now using hard terrain here means that he cannot really shoot missiles at me. So I don't need as many countermeasures. But we need to make sure that we don't get HMD slaved by an R-73. So we do want to be a little bit careful. I want to try to get behind him as quickly as possible. Because that's the way you kill in the Mirage. You need to get position. Now I can try to raid fight him. I can try to like keep my speed high. The issue is that I don't know the exact speed at this point. And it feels so unnatural to me that I'm not entirely sure what to expect at this moment. So I'm just going to kind of send it. I lose a bit more speed than anticipated because this is a high altitude map. And I sacrifice a bit more speed than I would like to. But it gives me a bit of position here. I'm sitting basically away from his, his wares. I'm jamming his wares. Which means I'm just not sitting in front of him. I'm sitting outside of the ability of the R-73. I'm outside of the gimbal limit of his weapon systems. Which means that I can sit here for a little bit longer. Now he's doing the right thing. And he's going to use his energy here that he did actually keep a little bit. To just get the hell out of here. Because if he keeps this up, I will pitch him behind him. And he dies. He runs away. I get back on his 6. And instead of chasing him to the end of the earth... I'm going to give him a little bit of breathing room so that he actually re-engages me. I can tell that this guy wants to fight. He's not running to run. So I'm going to give him the room so he can re-engage me. I don't have many countermeasures though. So I'm going to keep it a little bit side on. I don't want to go directly head on so he can barrel stuff me. And this time I'm going to keep a little bit more speed. I'm going to do the opposite of what I did the last time I merged with this guy in the hope that he doesn't anticipate it. And he also does the opposite and I didn't anticipate it myself. So we kind of mind gamed each other here. He gets a lot of position. I barely get out of his guns there. And I'm throttling down here to get behind him ASAP. Because I don't have the flares to contest this guy by sitting in front of him. I need to get behind him. We jam his wares. We flare his missile. We instantly get back on him. We are going way too slow however. But it doesn't matter. I'm trying to throttle up but it won't actually engage the afterburner for some reason. There we go. But at this point we are firmly planted on this guy 6. And he's going to have quite a bad time to get us off him. Magic 2 is at this range. At these speeds. By the time his flares are heated up. 
the missile is already firmly in your asshole. Nicely flown, however. I I got carried by the plane this time around. That was not my piloting that won the game. The plane did it for me. So yes, it is the plane, not the pilot. And then for the last game of the day, we have a bit of a BVR LARPA match. We hold our ground. We stay away from people. We have our full countermeasures. And this is going to be BVR LARP, which I still stand behind that it's not that difficult. Now, I got flamed in the last video or the one before that, where I said that BVRing is really not that hard of a concept. And they're all like, oh, I'm sick of CC saying that it's easy. I'm, I mean, am I not showing you that it kind of is? It's really not that hard of a concept to grasp. Yes, you need a little bit of knowledge, but once you get it down, it's really as simple as shoot a missile at someone, notch their missile and send another one back at him and try to just overwhelm your opponent. If both parties do it correctly, no one is going to be killing each other. Of course, in a 1v1 where you're not allowed to go back to the runway and land, a little bit of a different metric. But this is 16v16, so all you really need to do is just stay on the defensive while sending out enough offensive missiles to give them something to think about. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right here. I haven't locked up a TWS. It won't give him a hard lock warning. So he doesn't really know that I'm locking him right now. We have him locked up. I see that the closure rate starts to increase quite drastically. So he's turning in right now. So I'm going to shoot a missile at him. It will probably not reach him. But if it does, it would be pretty funny. So I'm just going to send a missile at him. It's going to force him to turn out. Which gives me a little bit of room to actually engage the people on the deck here. Now I'm free to start pitching down. And start launching missiles there. But there's another missile on the way. Because keep in mind he can do the same thing that I did to him. He has TWS. He can lock us up. And until the missile goes pitbull. I will not get a warning. So you always need to assume if you don't see a contrail. That there might be a missile on the way. Now the second it starts beeping. It probably is about 16 kilometers away or 18 kilometers away. Depending on the missile. You need to start making some changes. To your approach because you don't want to just headbutt the missile and here you can tell that the f-16 is flying right at me we have a closure rate of about 800 meters a second and i have a lock warning on my rwr on the left now the rwr of the mirage 2000 is super good i can see the control coming off his plane so i'm just going to turn out he's already notching i'm not going to waste a missile on him he's already pre-notching before i even fire so there's no use for me to really shoot one in return and that's kind of his mistake because now I just defeat a missile for free and it didn't cost me anything other than like 5 chaff. Now the F-16 is flying to the other side of the map. The J-11 got killed and I am able to start wreaking havoc on the deck here. We have Mr. Clown. He's flying a little bit sideways but he's not really notching us right now. And then the second F-16 pops up. So I'm going to go for him first instead of the F-15 directly below us. Yes, the F-15 below us probably would have been a sure kill. But the F-16 was already kind of looking at us. He's going very fast. And he's not able to turn out and notch. Now, I'm going to leave for now. The F-16 that I shot a missile at actually trades with someone else. So I didn't end up getting the kill for that one. But that is completely fine. We are simply going to disengage. We're going very fast right now. Or at least decently fast. And we are just going to get away from the main blob in the middle. F-16 died. Or the F-16 is in a flat spin. And you can already see Mr... Well, Asian characters over there, he is definitely going to try and steal my kill. Because, you know, that's what people do nowadays. Now, I'm going to look at this in horror. He's probably going to waste a missile for it as well. There he goes. He R-73 is an F-16 in a flash spin. I slap him with the bro. And we are going to be turning around. Now, I'm not entirely sure where everyone is. I don't have any RWR signals. But I do see Mr. Willy Super Dry or whatever his name is on the other side of the map in a second. So I know where he is. There he is. Wasabi super dry. And I'm going to light him up with the TWS. So I know where he is. And I can keep track of him while I look for other people. And there is Mr. F-16 on the left. Now he's much closer. He's going to be much more of a threat. He used an AIM-9M. I'm going to hope that he doesn't actually have MRAMs. And I'm locking him up. I'm going already a bit to the side here. So I can notch him if he shoots at me. But he wasn't actually going for me. And this is why I didn't instantly fire the missile at him. Because he is simply going to disengage. So now instead of looking at him. The guy that is flying back to the runway. I'm going to lock onto the F-16 over there. Now he has been doing the right thing. He has been BVRing. He has been notching. He has been going cold. So I want him to get a little bit closer here. And there it goes. We shoot the missile at like 7 kilometers. He's going very fast. We have plenty of room to turn out. He eats shit. We go cold. 
and that is another W for us. Now we are getting a lock from the right here and I'm not sure where it is just yet. We have two magics left and one Mika only and there is the missile. Now I start notching but then I notice it's actually an aim 7F so I'm gonna go down and I'm just going to simply out pull the missile because aim 7Fs are actually harder to notch and go cold against because they use the radar of the plane which is a lot stronger than the tiny radar in the seeker head of a Fox 3. So for now I'm actually just gonna bleed his energy or rather bleed his missiles. I'm just gonna kind of snake left and right, let the missile pull a little bit, let it run out of fuel and then I'm just going to re-engage him because I know there is an F-16 next to him as well. We see him on the RW-1 next to the F-15. I'm not entirely sure where he is just yet, so I don't want to start dogfighting him. And the F-15 is actually quite scary to dogfight as well, especially if he starts behind you. And I'm not sure how many IRCCM missiles he has left, so I'm not going to risk it. I'm simply going to break out, and I'm going to see if I can spot the F-16. Now, the F-15 actually breaks off and gives me a bit of room, which means that I'm able to lock onto him now. And there is the F-16. So I'm going to break lock. I'm going to lock him up with the Mika. I'm going to fire it off. And then last second, we are going to be starting the notch. There we go. And down he goes. And we go directly towards the F-15 again. Now the F-15 is flying away from us. He is actually going for bots. Which I think is not the right call here. But it's fine with me. Because it means that I can kill the F-16 for free. And then we just kind of pitch into the... Uh, F-15 here and he's going way too slow he is kind of killing himself so we are just going to shoot a magic at him he's going to eat shit and die and we are going to go straight back to the runway we take back off we go into the middle of the map and I know there is a F-4F ICE as well as a MiG-29 or an S-27 I've only seen the radar signature I'm not entirely sure what it is exactly but he's already hard locking us so I'm thinking he does not have R-77s he only has the R27 probably because that's why it's hard locking me or he just doesn't know how to use them that is also completely fine but this is my interpretation for now I'm simply going to fly away for a little bit because I know where the F4F was roughly so I'm just trying to see if I can get a little bit more separation in get a little bit further from the runway in case I need to and then I turn around because the, this guy behind me will probably catch me well I can just run forever but that isn't really interesting. So I turn around and I start looking for him. Now I should have gone into the scoped mode a little bit quicker here. I'm looking with the TWS. I'm looking around and going up and down. I'm not finding anything. So instead I'm going to go into the big box pulse doppler mode. We find him quite easily. We lock him up. We fire a missile at him. And I wasn't really worried about pulling into him because he hasn't launched on me yet. I didn't get a launch warning. He forced a breakout. He's forced a notch. A little bit too late because he was simply too close and this is why i keep these missiles for a little bit of a closer range the frf then lands and leaves a little bit unfortunate and that's all i have for you today hope it was obvious why i think that these fox 3 missiles are kind of bullshit against planes that are stock or don't have them but again i'm not gonna harp about it anymore thank you all for watching and you'll see me in the next one